Dr. Edna Arden Ismail, the director and founder of the Edna Arden Maternity Hospital and former foreign minister of Somaliland, has been recognized globally for her work to improve the health of women and children in Somaliland. My colleague Trix Ingado sat down with the activist, scholar and midwife. And here now is that interview. Dr. Edna Aden Ismail, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now, you have an ex impressive, extensive resume in your work with in, he in the health sector in Somaliland, as well as your political affiliations and your political work. Now, I'm actually very curious about your beginnings because I've read a lot about how you started off and how you even taught yourself how to read. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. inspiring stories. So could you tell us a bit about your beginnings? Yes, well... Um I think it all starts with, uh, I come from former British Somaliland protectorate. Yes. Uh, because we need to place Somaliland mm -hmm. on the map right. where it belongs. Mm -hmm. um, we're neighbors to former French Somaliland, which mm -hmm. is the Republic of Djibouti. All right. And we're not neighbors to former Italian Somalia, mm -hmm. the Somali Republic that everybody knows, knows about. about yeah. uh, in former British Somaliland protectorate mm -hmm. uh, in, in, the, uh, in the 40s, mm -hmm. uh, there were no schools for girls. Yeah. And I was sent to Djibouti to learn to read and write. And uh, back home, I learned, taught myself to read with mm -hmm. little boys in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And education was something that I was passionate about. But you were in a society that was not very um, proactive encouraging, about, yeah. Encouraging girls to learn to read and write. Yes. Uh, but I was determined to learn what the boys were learning. Mm. They seemed to be thriving on, yeah. on what they were being taught. Yeah. And I could not understand how this could be harmful to me mm -hmm. as a woman, yes. as a girl. Yes. Um, so that, that's how it started. And then I won a scholarship from mm -hmm. Britain. I went to England, mm -hmm. trained as a nurse, trained mm -hmm. as a midwife. Absolutely. And uh, with, that, with that privilege mm -hmm. and that um, uh, training came back to my country, Somaliland, mm -hmm. in 1961 yes. uh, as its first trained nurse midwife Absolutely. and from then on started training mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. uh, becoming a role model yeah. and trying to encourage um, the the the, uh, the participation of girls mm -hmm. in, in whatever was available at the time yeah. so that has been my lifelong challenge mm -hmm. my passion mm -hmm. uh, sometimes my you know present-day nightmare <laughs> but then like every challenge is yes. uh, if you feel passionate enough about something right. If you feel strongly about something, mm. you continue to, to, to move forward to and do not persevere. get yourself uh, discouraged yes. from doing what you know is right. Absolutely. And uh, today I'm proud to say that mm -hmm. Somaliland, mm. that country that is not even internationally recognized, that may not even appear on some people's maps, right. um, has the, the, one of the highest per capita trained health professionals mm -hmm. in the Horn of Africa. Right. Now that is saying something about it, determination. Yes. And 70% of those health professionals mm -hmm. happen to be women. Wow. So my lifelong challenge mm -hmm. and my lifelong struggles mm -hmm. have really become my pride. They and have my, paid off. Uh, have paid off mm -hmm. and paying off for my people. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Paying off, paid off in the lives that they save. Yes. The, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the others they inspire and mm -hmm. teach. Mm -hmm. And that is the way forward for Africa. Yes. Nobody will come from the moon mm -hmm. uh, in purple and, stripes. And take us out of our problems. And take us out of mm -hmm. the situation that our women, our children, and our people find themselves in, mm -hmm. in regard to health yes. and welfare and agriculture mm -hmm. and engineering <laughs> and all the good things that help a nation to move forward mm -hmm. and Somaliland. Mm -hmm. Now, in um, spite of not being recognized, yes, he's doing is, do, is doing quite great health-wise. Now, as a young girl, you were the boss's daughter, so to speak, at a health facility. Yes. So this exposed yes. you to some of the needs. Could you take us back to that and what you saw in terms of women and healthcare, and then how it inspired you to actually come back and work with yes. women? Uh, well, I, I was privileged to be born to Somaliland's first doctor, yeah. someone who was known as the father of healthcare, somebody who was loved by everybody. And from a young age, I saw the passion that my father had for his people, the compassion he mm -hmm. had, how he gave his life to them. Mm -hmm. And um, I just made a, a, a promise to myself that right. one day I would learn enough mm -hmm. to be able to help him and be able to do as much as he was doing mm -hmm. for our people. So that, that was my first inspiration. Um, and I love what I'm doing. Yeah. And uh, uh, it hasn't really been such a difficult thing for me to be doing what mm -hmm. I'm doing because 
I see the inspiration. Mm -hmm. And today, um, uh, you know, my book is out, my memoir is out, and, yes. and it tabulates all of that, mm -hmm. a woman of firsts. Mm -hmm. But when I see in my operating theater, in, yes. in the hospital that I was able to build in my country, Somaliland, mm -hmm. and I go into the operating theater, and there's a busy list of patients to be taken care of. Right. And I see a female chief surgeon, mm -hmm. assisted by another female surgeon, mm -hmm. operating on a patient right. that is being given anesthesia by a Somaliland female mm. with an instrument Somaliland nurse assisting them yeah. in a hospital mm. on a once killing ground yeah. built by a Somaliland woman. Yeah. And all that energy and all those skills mm -hmm. and knowledge concentrating on saving that life on that table and succeeding. I think that is something to be very proud of yes. and to be very grateful for mm -hmm. that we could see that and achieve that. Yeah. So my, my message to young people yes. is the sky's the limit. All depends on your determination. Mm -hmm. All depends on how you either stop from getting discouraged yeah. or moving forward and bettering yourself professionally. Mm -hmm. Uh, how you should be doing whatever you're doing to the fullest of, of, of your capacity and your capabilities. Uh, Somaliland has a lot to, to, to show to the world. Show, yeah. We have a lot to be proud mm -hmm. of. And, when, and, people, mm -hmm. when people are hearing about the, the, the miseries of, of the people in neighboring so, former Italian Somalia, yeah. and I see the achievements of Somaliland, Somaliland. that is not recognized on the yeah. other side, I say there is a message to take home there. Mm -hmm. How is Som Somaliland succeeding when Somalia yeah. is failing mm -hmm. so badly Absolutely. in spite of all the billions and resources that are that going they, there? They do have now, uh, evidently, you're very patriotic and very enthusiastic and positive about your people and their potential. And to this end, you founded a hospital that was is the Edna Aden uh, of, uh, Foundation, or the yeah. hospital. Mm -hmm. um, Tell us about the challenges that you went through in setting this up, being a woman, wanting mm -hmm. to spearhead such a very aggressive um, and forward-thinking uh, yeah, project. Well, I retired from the UN. I mm -hmm. had a very long career with the UN. Right. Um, for a long career, and then I had my pension, my mm -hmm. terminal benefits, my savings, my, my trinkets, my beautiful cars, mm -hmm. and my country next door. My, mm. Because I was in Djibouti at the time, I was a WHO representative in Djibouti, uh -huh. and my country in Somaliland had just separated from Somalia, yeah. withdrawn from a very faulty union we tried to get into many yeah. years ago, and the country had been leveled to the ground. Mm -hmm. Ninety-five percent of our of, of our cities were flattened, mm -hmm. our hospitals destroyed, our schools destroyed, our mosques destroyed, our people killed. Mm bodies filled into mass graves and massacres. And I felt that I could not live with myself, and worrying about my, my trinkets and yeah. my, my, my designer clothes and, and whatever. So I just sold everything I had, wow. took my terminal benefits, mm -hmm. resucked my whole life, mm -hmm. went home to Somaliland and built that hospital. Uh, everybody thought that I was crazy. <laughs> Many of them were probably right. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is what I could do for my people at yeah. that moment of greatest need. Mm -hmm. And that hospital, which everybody thought I could not build, mm -hmm. uh, because the more they said I couldn't do it, then I said, I'll prove it to you. I'll show you it can <laughs> be done. Uh, was opened in 2002. Mm. Uh, it's a teaching hospital. It's a referral hospital. Mm. We treat patients from neighboring countries, Ethiopia, Djibouti, mm -hmm. from all of Somaliland, and from neighboring Somalia as yes. well. Mm -hmm. Many sick people come to seek treatment and surgery in my hospital. Mm. Um, and six, seven years ago, mm -hmm. uh, my hospital, uh, where we had delivered over 25,000 babies mm. in the past 17 years, mm. six years ago had, another, had a baby called a university. Uh. So today we have the hospital and we also have the university, mm -hmm. the Edna Adam university mm -hmm. uh, with about 1,500 students. Wow. 70% of them are women. Okay. All in health uh, 
sciences, medicine, nursing, midwifery, lab technicians, mm -hmm. public health, and so on. Yeah. Now, with all the progress that you are describing, Somaliland remains, we would say, one of the home of Africa's best kept secret. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is, and what can be done for you to actually spread a different narrative? Because far away from war and terrorism, there, there needs to be something more to be done, I would imagine, also to encourage young people outside who fled earlier mm -hmm. on to come back and actually actually give back to the mm -hmm. community? Um, well, I think Somalia needs to continue on that path yeah. of progress, mm -hmm. of democracy, uh, of peace and stability that we have enjoyed for the past 30 years. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't hear about Somaliland. Yeah. There's nothing to, there's no bombs to report, there's no ah. terrorism to report, there's yeah. no piracy to, re to report. Mm -hmm. When we are neighbors to the world's most pirate-infested waters, yes in Somalia, mm -hmm. we have no pirates in Somaliland. Mm -hmm. We have no, you know, I drive my own car, you would, you know, you and I would go yeah. down the street and mm -hmm. go down and shopping yes. together. I've actually been there, worries. it's quite peaceful. What, exactly, yeah. well I'm glad you have. Yeah. Um, what we need to do yeah. is continue on that path yeah. and allow the world to come and learn from, from the successes of Somaliland. Mm -hmm. And it's not only Somaliland that needs to, to, to you know, uh, benefit from that success yes the entire africa uh -huh. our youth need to benefit uh -huh. from peace and stability Not true enough of our youth have have fed the sharks in the mediterranean sea right uh, we can develop our corner of the world uh -huh. uh, and in fact uh, you know, entire africa uh -huh. to become a new frontier of business yes. of industry of development of agriculture, we should be feeding the world, not asking the world to give to us food us. and feed our children. Sure. Our youth are full of energy and knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, I am inspired when I see how, how innovative and creative our youth are. There's, there's an energy mm -hmm. in our youth yes. that needs to be tapped, yes. encouraged, mm -hmm. protected, facilitated. Mm -hmm. That's the way forward. Absolutely. Um, and Somaliland is proud to, to, to be leading the way in that. Mm -hmm. And we welcome partnerships. We trade with everybody. Yeah. We trade with neighbors. We even trade with neighboring Somalia when they have mm -hmm. time to trade. <laughs> um, but that's the way forward. Mm -hmm. That's the way we will fight hunger. Absolutely. No more that mm -hmm. picture of that small African child mm -hmm. with the flies it's on its nose. Yeah, yeah. No way. Mm -hmm. It's the African youth scientists mm -hmm. and, and, and engineers and, and IT experts, yes. um, you know, a, a little five, four-year-old mm -hmm. kids mm -hmm. are IT uh, savvy. Uh, savvy today. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, that is the way to go. Yeah, that's now, to as go. you speak about immigration and how it needs to end, movement in Africa is quite uh, normal and a lot of African countries are welcoming of that. You've just said Somaliland is welcoming to that but then of course they, we have had the report of xenophobia in, in parts in the south. When you see such headlines, when we are already, st uh, we have a lot stacked against us, what does it make you feel and what voice, what, what would you lend to the voices that are saying this needs to be stopped? Well, well I think the wisdom of those who say enough is enough should be heard, mm. enough, enough destruction. Mm -hmm. um, and it has to, um, that, that, how should I say, there's a, 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 lo a big political immaturity yeah. in some of the leaders yes. of, of troublesome African countries. Yes. Um, the African Union mm -hmm. and the Organization of African Unity before that mm -hmm and uh, has been established as an institution that brings together the wisdom of the African leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, laws have been enacted yeah. to be respected. Mm -hmm. uh, constitutions have been presented and accepted mm -hmm. to be respected. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to go, you know, focus yes. On the, you know, on, on the law and order, on the Constitution and the Charter of the African Union mm -hmm. before we uh, pick up 
you know, spears, spears and start and machetes, and, machetes yes, yeah. and, and start hitting each other. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty unfortunate. Now, speaking of disputes, Kenya and Somalia have a, have had a bit of a tiff when it comes to the maritime border dispute. What's your take on that, or rather, what is Somaliland's position? Uh, well, Somalia is famous for that. I mean, we, 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 they have the same problem with us mm -hmm. as well. Uh, my take is that African borders mm -hmm. have been established. Mm -hmm. Uh, the colonial borders of, of Africa are sacrosanct. They were there to be respected. The Charter of African, U the African Union is there to protect it. And if immature politicians wake up one morning and say, I'd like to move the, the line here and there and, and, and whichever way that um, suits me, mm -hmm. uh, all African borders would collapse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think this responsibility is, is totally the mandate of the African Union to settle. It shouldn't favor one against the other. It should be fair and it should be respectful of the African borders that were inherited at a time of independence. Right. That's what the African leaders agreed to do mm -hmm. and that's how it should be implemented. Yes. Not according to the whims of, 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 of politicians mm -hmm. who for reasons only known to themselves uh, or for you know, economic personal greed, right. wish to move borders whichever way they like. Absolutely. And we have the same problem with them. Mm -hmm. with the, the Africa, the, uh, Somaliland has been established according to Anglo-French treaties mm -hmm. and Anglo-Italian treaties mm -hmm. and Anglo-Ethiopian treaties. So each one has its well-defined borders mm -hmm. that needs to be respected. And then th through that mutual respect, Mm -hmm. trade, mm -hmm. develop collaboration, right. fight our common enemy, yes. which is poverty, Absolutely. which is ignorance, mm -hmm. which is hunger. We have far bigger enemies it to should. fight True. than to be fighting each One other. And another. I completely agree with you on that. And lastly, as we are trying, as Somaliland tries to gain its position on the international maps, how then can Somaliland and Kenya work together in ensuring that there are better relations? Uh, well, Somaliland and Kenya have been friends for very many, many years. Mm -hmm. my, my late husband and our late president, uh, Mohamed Ibrahim Egal, was a great friend of Jomo Kenyatta, yeah. late Jomo Kenyatta. Uh, I have enjoyed the hospitality of, of like, President mm -hmm. Jomo Kenyatta and Mami in Guinea in 1968. Yes. Uh, so this is a long-standing friendship. Yeah. I think there's um, a good potential for trade, mm -hmm. for collaboration, for joining efforts mm -hmm. to move our people mm -hmm. forward so that people can find jobs, yes. have, uh, find peace, mm -hmm. political stability, and Somaliland welcomes. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think there's going to be a trade uh, conference soon. Mm -hmm. uh, there should be more of that. There should right. be more interaction. There should be more. There's about 10,000 Kenyans working in Somali, Absolutely, yeah. in Somali land. Mm -hmm. And there's perhaps uh, quite a few working in, mm -hmm. in, in Kenya as well yeah. and studying here. In Kenya. Um, I think there's a potential for great collaboration mm -hmm. between Somali and Kenya and between the nations of the Horn. Absolutely. Um, as we conclude, I'd like to read your message from my editor, Janet Chapia, who says that I should say hi to you. Thank and you. And of course, she said she, I have said she has lived among Somalilanders and they're the kindness, kindest and most hospitable people she has ever come well, across. Well, thank you. I'm yeah. glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm sure my Kenyan colleagues working mm -hmm. in my hospital in the university would like to hear that mm -hmm. as well. Yes. Uh, they're my sons. They're my, they're my colleagues. Mm -hmm. They're my, my staff. Mm -hmm. They're the people I rely on. Yeah. They're, they're, they're competent, efficient, mm -hmm. And I love them, mm -hmm. like okay. I love all my other stuff. Absolutely. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. And I, could ho I would just like to wish you all the best in your endeavors to uh, ensuring that there's better health care in Thank Somaliland. You. All right, that one-on-one -on -one conversation with Dr. Edna Arden Ismail wraps up today's edition of Bottom Line Africa. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. Hope you're adequately informed. That's how we finish today's edition. My name is Jesse Rogers. As usual, we leave you with the images of the day and the proverb of the day. Enjoy the rest.